So I was the little kid who was running around the neighborhood trying to sell things. I was trying to do little shows for people, like my little dance class shows. I had a paper route, and I never really understood what an entrepreneur was at the time. I just knew that I wasn't really employable. And in fact, my first real job after college, I got fired in three months because I had too many ideas and they wanted me just to stay in my place. So I've always been an entrepreneur and when I was in college, I was working my way through college and I was teaching aerobics down at the local studio and someone asked me to come to their house and teach aerobics. And so I started doing private aerobics classes which turned into personal training. And as far as I know, it was me, Body by Jake and Mark Sisson, this, the first personal trainers way back when. But this challenging thing happened. I realized that I could only ever make $10,000 a month because I only had so many hours. And so what I started to do was number one, hire people to personal train for me. The challenge was as they got better, I trained my competition. And then I figured out that if I went and did public speaking, I could make a lot more money each time I spoke, but still I was kind of stuck in this whole rut of trading time for money. Then at 30 years old, this woman sent me a videotape. This just dates it. A videotape, and when I put the videotape in the VHS player, I remember seeing them talk about trading time for money and how if you wanted to get truly wealthy, that you had to leverage yourself through other people, through tools, through technology. And it was an MLM tape. And I immediately dropped out of my PhD program I sold my personal training business and I went and moved in with this woman to learn how to do multi-level marketing. I did multi-level marketing for a couple of years and what I kind of took away from all of that was you need to duplicate what you're doing. If something wasn't duplicatable, there was no reason to do it. If you couldn't scale it, there was no reason to do it. If you couldn't create leverage in it, there was no reason to do it. I became so... Uh, like I would never trade time for money again. It just was like abhorrent to me. Uh, but I also thought at the time, I thought, why am I building a business for someone else? And so I had this big aha that if I could do this here, because they said in multi-level marketing that an average person could make an above average income. The reality was the people I saw in network marketing that were killing it were so above average. And for so long, they just were making an average income. I thought, you know, I think I can do this for myself. So that's when I really jumped out and started building my own businesses. And I will tell you, I spun and spun and spun doing it. But one of the first things that I did was I had a computer and there was AOL. And I remember pulling up a big long cord and sticking it in and because I was up in the mountains of North Carolina with a baby trying to figure out how I was going to make money as a personal trainer up in the middle of nowhere. And I decided to do fitness online. Now, this was before anything like this existed. But at the time, I started doing it, one of my old clients said, hey, why don't you come to Palm Springs and just work for us? And that was the first job that I had, where I said I was fired in three months. And what's great about that was I was a young mom, two small kids. My then husband decided he didn't want to work, that he just wanted to play tennis. We had no money, so it wasn't like this was really a choice. And when you have massive constraints, you get super creative. And so at that time, I just decided, I've got to build a business quickly. I'm in Palm Springs. I don't know anybody. I'll go on TV. No TV experience, but I got on local TV. And from that, I started doing, seeing a lot of clients. I started getting trainers to work for me. So I went back to what I knew. But one of the things that happened because of that was that I ended up getting on the Dr. Phil show. And what was fantastic about that was I'd already been on TV. See, I think a lot of people want to be on these big shows, but you need to be on the little shows before you be on, you're on the big shows. So when I started on Dr. Phil, I was actually ready. I was ready to do that, but what I wasn't ready for was to build a business. So here I'm on Dr. Phil, and I'm literally on there every single week. And I've got a website, but it's missing something. It was missing the little box that says, enter your name and email here. So I'm on Dr. Phil for two years, and I don't build a list at all. 
nothing is happening. I'm just working a whole lot and people recognize me. And I remember one of my friends said, you know, you know what's the worst thing when you're a celebrity? It's being a broke celebrity. When you don't have the money, you know, to buy the clothes that you need to be on the TV show, you, you are paying your own way to do all of these things. And I didn't know how to monetize off of it. And I thought, I know this online thing is something, but I couldn't quite figure out what to do with it. And I was sitting down with someone, with this guy, Dr. Joe Mercola, who created the biggest natural health website. And at the time, he was just messing around with it, and he was going to a, an online marketing seminar with Yannick Silver. And he said to me, he goes, JJ, the money is in the list. And I'm like, what list is this? What's the list? And that's when I made that decision, I was going to learn this. And he told me to read this book, The 4-Hour Workweek. So I opened the book, I'm reading the book, and in the book they talked about Dan Kennedy, so I started reading Dan Kennedy's books, and I found Dan Kennedy doing a little conference call, and the conference call was with a gal named Allie Brown. And Allie Brown had a little product called the E-Zine Queen, and she, you, could, you bought her Boost Biz with your e own E-Zine product for $297, and that was a stretch for me to buy, and I bought it. And the next thing I know, I've now got an opt-in box and I'm building a list. And she now had a seminar called the Online Blueprint Success Workshop. And I went to that workshop and I remember sitting in that workshop and there were people who'd been in her mastermind group before. Now, I didn't know what a mastermind was. I didn't really know much about online marketing except that I wanted to have a list. And I wasn't even quite sure what I was going to be doing with that list. I just knew I wanted one. But at that seminar, Mari Smith was teaching Facebook. I mean, this is when Facebook just came out. Marie Forleo had been one of her students who was giving a testimonial. And I just thought, whatever this woman is selling, I'm going to buy because I'm going to do whatever she tells me to do because she is where I want to be. And she started telling her offer of her mastermind. And now I'm broke. I do not really have any money at, the po at this point. And she has, she's talking about this mastermind that she has and she's got two levels and there's special diamond level and only certain people are going to get into this and I'm like I'm in that level I'm going to do this right and I'm thinking how much could this possibly be and I'm calculating in my head how I'm gonna you know not how I can afford it because to me I realized right then my life was not going to change unless I changed and I couldn't afford not to but like I was thinking maybe this will be ten thousand dollars okay I can figure out how to do this and then she's describing it more I'm like well I think this is going to be a little more expensive than that by the time she throws this price out, and I've already told all everyone sitting around me that I'm going to join this thing, she said, and it's $100,000, which was like, I mean, I couldn't even fathom it. So I joined it. I wrote a check. I said, please don't deposit this check. Like, I had no idea how I was going to pay for this, but I will tell you that, you know, they say the more you pay, the more you pay attention. I joined that mastermind. I explained to her where I was at. She goes, I believe in you. You'll figure it out. In that first year in the online business, I went from zero to $550,000 online. I threw everything up against the wall. There was no real, she had a roadmap for how you do this, but in health there was really no one doing any of this stuff yet. And so I was following, you know, Jay Abraham says if it works in one industry, it'll work in another. Or I think it was Dan Kennedy. It was like, okay, I'm gonna follow these things. And I just was kind of messing with it and trying to make it work and using my notoriety of being on TV to do it. So the first year I did 550, I joined again because clearly it was working. I 5 x my investment. Next year I made 880, and I thought, gosh, this is great. I need a year just to implement. And the next year I barely grew at all. It was like, ugh. So then I went and started studying with Joe Polish and Brendan Burchard, and I just went, I'm gonna learn everything I can. Because again, back then, there wasn't a roadmap. There weren't like systems to follow. There wasn't that, you know, you had to piecemeal all the tech you were going to use all over the place. And it was just throwing a lot of stuff against the wall. But one of the things Ali said is once you hit that thing that works, then you just get ready, it'll scale. So now I'm getting ready. I have a book that's going to come out. I've gotten a big book deal. And this was called The Virgin Diet. And I decided, you know what, I'm not going to leave anything to chance. I'd done one book before. It hadn't really done well because I didn't know what I was doing. I always go and look for who's done what I want to do and just I, I go and, and hire them and have them coach me. So Brendan Burchard taught me how to do a New York Times bestseller launch. 
I talked to Dr. Daniel Amen, one of my buddies on PBS. I went and did a public television special. I had everything lined up, so, and I had my opt-ins, my program, everything you need for this to be successful. It's six weeks before the book launch. My 16-year-old son goes out to walk to a friend's house at dusk. A car hits him going 40 miles an hour, leaves him for dead in the street. My ex-husband and son see, him, see this accident scene because they knew Grant had gone out for a walk. And they come running in after asking the police what had happened. And they'd said, a boy gets, got hit. And he looked at my other son, who was then 15, who looks like his twin, and said, and he looked just like him. We race to the hospital. When we get there, the doctors tell us we have to let my son die, that he has uh, major brain bleeds, and he has a torn aorta. And the torn aorta is going to rupture sometime in the next 24 hours if we don't repair it. But the nature of the injury, they can't repair it there, and that he would never survive this airlift to the next hospital. And even if he were to survive the airlift, he's not going to survive the surgery. And even if he were to survive the surgery, he'd be so brain damaged, it wouldn't be worth it. I remember my 15-year-old son was looking at this doctor and, and said, so maybe there's like a 0.25% chance he could make it. The doctor said, yep, that sounds about right. And he goes, we'll take those odds. It's not zero. Really important point, you know, your kids listen to how you think. And we always were the glass half full people. So he's like, not, you know, it's not zero. Let's go for it. So we overruled the doctor, airlifted my son. And the doctors at this next hospital, Harbor UCLA, five surgical teams worked on him, saved his life. And I launched a New York Times bestseller, Bedside with My Son in a Coma. Because again, just like before, when I had two young babies and a husband who didn't want to work, I sat there that first night in the hospital and I said, Grant, I'm going to do whatever it takes. Because I knew like this was going to take a lot to save his life. And I said, I'm going to help you get to be 110%. I just need you to fight. And so I remember being in that, in that hospital and talking to Allie Brown on the phone, and she goes, now you're really going to go for it, aren't you? And I go, yes, I am. <laughs> you know, I am doing it. And so you know, I, I often wonder, like, would the Virgin of Diet have been on the New York Times for 26 weeks, have been the massive hit it had if I didn't have that big push from the universe? I don't know. Um, but man, it made me really, really go for this, this one. And it really changed the trajectory of everything. So that book went, I did a load of media, but I also was ready. I'd learned all of those things in online marketing. I had everything set up. I had the free plus shipping book funnel that Brendan Burchard had taught me how to do. I had the program on the back end. The program sold the products. And what was crazy about it was this was kind of a fluke. I'd written The Virgin Diet, and I created The Virgin Diet Shake. And the whole thing was you have to you know, part of the virgin diet is to drink the virgin diet shake. Well, we weren't going to call it the virgin diet shake, but I was sitting in the hospital and we needed to slap the labels on it and I didn't have a logo. And so we were like, just call it the virgin diet and put my picture on it. Well, it worked out perfectly because everywhere I was like on Rachel Ray saying, showing a thing about how to do a virgin diet shake. And it wasn't like I was promoting my product. It just happened to be called that. So we sold tens of millions of dollars of the Virgin Diet Shake because it's in the book, it's in the programs, it was in a public television, it went everywhere. And then Richard Branson did a cease and desist, but we'd already gotten it launched. Uh, but again, I was ready with everything and we'd done a full integration of an opt-in to a book launch, to a little offer, to a program, to all these products on the back end that created continuity through subscribe and save. So I learned how to do all of those things. And then I was able to repeat it with the cookbooks and the sugar impact diet and all the books that came. What was interesting as I started to do this was um, most of my friends have been our medical doctors. And I'd had one of my, my side hustles had been teaching doctors how to add nutrition to their office and using supplements. So I used to put on tons of seminars to doctors and I actually taught a course called Overcoming Weight Loss Resistance to doctors. And so they'd been watching me do all this and some of them started to say, hey, how are you doing what you're doing? 
I want you to teach me. And I kept saying, I, don't, I can't teach you yet because I don't really know how I'm doing what I'm doing. When I do, I'll teach you. And then I was at an Experts Academy Brendan Burchard event and I went into a little coaching room. John and Jeff Walker, Jeff Walker did a little product launch formula like mastermind. And I'm in the room and I said, you know, how do I 10x my business? And he said, and a lot of times in life it's just about asking that right question. He goes, you know, 90% of your business should come from partners, from affiliates. And I go, wow, all my friends in, in the online space are in the business space. Like, I'm only getting about 10% of my business from partners because it it's, doesn't fit for someone who's selling like business marketing to all of a sudden go, hey, here, buy a weight loss program, heal your leaky gut. And so I thought, I gotta find more health people so we can partner together and collaborate. But I'd go to these marketing events and you'd have like 500 people in a room and five health people. So I started inviting my medical friends to Brendan's event. And then I started having little lunches at his event because they never had anything good for lunch. So at first it was about 10 people having lunch in a room. And then I remember after a couple of these, I'm walking down the hallway to go to the place where I catered it for lunch. And there's this line. And I'm thinking, God, that's weird. Someone else must be having a lunch near my lunch. No, the word had gotten out and all of these health people were now in line waiting to come to this thing. And so at that point I went, you know, I should probably just do an event after the event. So we started doing like a recap day after the event and then we started our own standalone event and it became its own multi-million dollar business because all of us were just looking for a place where we weren't alone and we could share best practices and collaborate. And, and even though when you do one thing it'll work in one area, there's, there's nuances in health that, that we were able to do that you know some of the things in health you can't you have to do differently otherwise you're going to get sued right so so that is my second business now as i started out building this consumer business because i love love everything about breaking through weight loss resistance and healing your metabolism to get healthy and lose weight but then on the other side i love helping other healthcare professionals do the same and success leaves clues and a lot of this now is, is easy to duplicate. So I've actually helped multiple people become New York Times bestselling offers. In fact, the Mindshare Collaborative has now helped more New York Times bestselling authors. It's launched more podcasts, more PBS specials. Um, we have like, I think now over $70 million in book advances. But what's super cool about that is early on, I thought, you know, I want to help a million people get healthy. And then I was on Dr. Phil. And Dr. Phil's audience was, like at the time, I think 13 million. And so I thought, all right, well then what's your moonshot? And the moonshot's a billion, and the billion isn't something you do on your own. And now I, through Mindshare, we're probably somewhere from about halfway to that goal. And we're really just scratching the surface. So that to me is the most exciting piece of all of this. And the big thing I would say is that I feel like my entrepreneurial journey like the biggest part of my entrepreneurial journey really started when I realized I was an entrepreneur, um, especially as a woman growing up in the 70s and 80s where no one really talked about entrepreneurship and most women were not having their own businesses. In fact, if you even look at the statistics now, uh, a woman with a million dollar business is truly like, you know, a needle in a haystack. So the biggest part of my career really took off when I understood who I was and started hanging out with other people like me and started having access to the tools and trainings that they had that just, gosh, I think nowadays you can so shortcut your success because of all this, it's so much easier. It's never been easier than right now to build a successful business that's leveraged, that really can give you a business, a life that, uh, that you can live anywhere. And in fact, the big reason I wanted to do this was to have freedom, to be able to provide for my kids and have freedom. And that allowed me when Grant got hit and he was in a coma and in the hospital for four and a half months to be able to be in the hospital with him by his side while breaking my first million in business and my second million in business.